four comedians are also real good friends Working on jokes, the fun never ends They're asking each other, is this anything? Oh yeah, did you guys see the outro yet? No. I, I like it. Okay. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check back for more individual clips and full episodes, or you can listen wherever you enjoy podcasts. If you want to support the show and get early access to new episodes, as well as extra fan-only content, go to patreon.com slash ITAPod. That's ITAPod, as in, is this anything podcast? Relevant links in the description. Take care. Hey, I also threw the uh, end screen wonderful. on there so that people can... Oh, oh you they can this is sim- great. Nice. Jared. Wow. This they is- can slash ITA pop. That's ITA no, Jared, pop we said it was as good. in, is this anything? <laughs> <laughs> Relevant links in the description. Take it. So, yeah. Oh, Jared. Oh, good job. Wow. Oh, my, oh, my hero. The second time was even better. <laughs> that was great. Are you this satisfied is- now, Jared? <laughs> So, yeah, links to other episodes if they want to continue down the rabbit hole. Little that's subscribe awesome. button. Awesome. And yeah, maybe let's watch it one more time. Clips and yeah. full episodes, <laughs> or you can listen wherever you enjoy podcasts. If you want to support the show and get... <laughs> Woo! It's so, so good. good. Uh, this is, without exaggeration, the best thing you've done. Uh, <laughs> that's the end, end the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go to hell, Rob. <laughs> I'm glad I did all this work for tell, you guys yesterday. Tell me, tell me how I can go to hell. Tell me afterwards. Put the, put the music on. <laughs> hey, everybody. If uh, Rob should go to hell, go to the Patreon. Two dollars. Rob will go to hell. Uh, Click the link here. You go straight to hell. <laughs> Rob goes to hell. <laughs> yeah. Make sure to subscribe for torture and all the painful parts of hell. <laughs> you want to join uh, an eternity of damnation, go ahead. <laughs> it's good that we were recording this. <laughs> hey, Jared, I noticed uh, the way that, that you were doing great stuff, and the way that you like to work is funny to me, because I will on occasion do this <clears throat> when it comes to, like, my personal life, maybe for, like, friends and family, if I'm, like, planning a birthday. Um, but you don't like to let us know what you're up to, <laughs> but you like to do it on your own. Um, what are you talking well, about? I, I, this maybe I'm off base here, but <laughs> I'm not offended. I'm just curious. <laughs> okay, so I'm not I'm not accusing you. I don't mind <laughs> something I've noticed, but you like to work on a little project on your own. But then every once in a while, you need a little information in order to make the thing happen. So you just, you put out a feeler, but you don't let us know what you're up to. <clears throat> You're so, you are referring to the text I sent you yesterday. That's that's the latest of many <laughs> times that you have put out a little like, hey, uh, what was maybe like one memory that you have of the other that you kind of like? And I'm like, oh, this. Oh, okay, all right, that's cool. You know, uh, and because you did the same thing when you came to the pictures and you, you, when you made the the song or the the video, you're just like, mm-hmm. hey, why don't you send me a JPEG of uh, an image that you like of you and uh, no further questions. Anyway. This is how I start to um, indulge in my personal fetish of getting weird things from my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so now I can start, and I can ask you guys for anything, and you'll just be like, "Oh, Jared sure. must be working on a great new <laughs> for the show." He asked me for some used underwear and uh, some, I, uh, a jar of my spit. Yeah, no, I can't yeah. wait to start sending you guys weird requests. I just like when <laughs> it's like, hey, if you had like a color of the rainbow <laughs> that you preferred over other colors of the rainbow, which would that be? Like, Do you have a you... picture of you with your uh, butt in a bucket? <laughs> <laughs> Any kind of bucket will do. Okay, Any kind okay, of bucket. That's great. That's great. No, I got it. We're good. Um, it needs to be uh, 1920 by 1080p. So uh, send that over. Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of Is This Anything? My name's Rob Ryan. As always, I'm joined by Brett Druck, Anthony Keffer, and Jarrett Berenstein. Jarrett, why don't you tell us our order for today? Today, our order is Brett, Rob, Anthony, and Jarrett. Uh, Brett, do you have some oh. jokes for us today? Yes. <laughs> uh, this or are you just now. doing crowd work today, Brett? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I do a session where I just make fun of you guys? <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, here's something you guys tell me. Does this anything? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. Uh, is this anything? Okay. Oh, is yeah. this anything? <clears throat> oh, and are we recording song? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I got a recording. <laughs> are you recording? 
I am now. This is going to make our episodes an hour longer. If we have. <laughs> oh, Anthony, play the this is going to make our episodes an hour longer jingle. <laughs> you, know the, you know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this song's really long. I like this. This is going to make our episodes way longer. Yeah. That's any, any other jingles I should play? No. I mean, those are all the ones that we all are aware of. <laughs> Um, okay. This is my impression of a guy. This is a, a Mormon uh, guy. He's a virgin, obviously. Uh, before sex, trying, trying to dirty talk. Oh, God, my cum is so wet. <laughs> Anthony, do you have a jingle for that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. All right. Cum, it's wet. <laughs> Not dry. Oh. Do you think it'd be funny if you were, if you did also the girl hearing that as like, okay, I guess that's better than the alternative. <laughs> better than last time when it was gaseous. <laughs> now he would know his cum is wet. I mean, I he he could have he probably have has ejaculated at some point. Uh, mm-hmm. So, is the joke that? I mean, he's aware that his cum is wet, but he's not like you know. He's not aware that it being extra wet isn't sexy. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Oh, okay, and good, good. if he if he had sex too many times that day, just dust would come out, right? And it would go. <laughs> right, it would make that sound. So uh, he's just yeah, specifying. yeah, yeah. He, I'm glad good. you got that in the joke. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that came across right. <laughs> <laughs> but Anthony, he's he has not had sex yet. He does not, yeah. So that's you know, why it's so so wet. Yeah, yeah. As as Anthony is just on. like this. It's just a sentence. It's not even a joke. <laughs> it's like I follow this guy. He's right. This is good dirty talk. <laughs> I thought this joke was based on me. This is the kind of stuff I say. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think that 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 works. Are you are you including the uh, that sort of you know? Well, obviously he hasn't had sex yet. Think all that. Uh, no, you know, I was actually just like, as, as I have been a lot lately, just like, I don't think this is really a stand-up joke because, you know, I'm not, I'm not too keen on using the format of this is my impression of, oh, um, yes. right. but I was thinking actually maybe it, it, I could approach it as, you know, it's gotta be hard if you've never had sex to do, to dirty talk, like if you're a Mormon or something. And I think that's kind of a good intro. I was just kind of thinking about that while you guys were talking. Yeah, mm. I think that's a really nice way to frame it if you're not doing the impression or the character. Or yeah, and then I, yeah. that actually might, might work that way. Um, uh, I don't know if this is putting too much on it, but I think it could, could be a funny idea that you, when you lost your virginity, the girl had a lot more experience than you, and she asked you to talk dirty, but you had never had sex before, so you didn't know. Oh, but that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> He was always. I cool was a stud. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so. she came thirty times. I, I have a a a, a, sm- a story from. You left your home. mom's vagina and entered the nurses. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's exactly exactly what happened. Uh, I have a I have a dirty talk story from a long time ago when uh, I met a girl up for a date and we were going back to her place to hook up, and she let me know on the date. She was like, just so you know, we're not, like, having sex tonight. And I was like, we don't have to have sex. It's totally cool. I'm not, whatever. And then she invites back to her place, and we do wind up fooling around a bit. And then she uh, uh, she also says, as we're fooling around, she's like, I don't really like like going down. I don't know. I'm just, I, I'm weird about it and that stuff. And I'm like, it's cool. That, you don't have to, whatever. And then we're making out some more, and then I start to move like I'm going to go down on her. And she's like, honestly, I'm not, like, super comfortable with that right now. And I was like, that's no worries. But she's still trying to, like, dirty talk, and she's trying to be sexy. And so she, like, whispers in my ear. She's like, what do you want? And I swear to God, and I said, I don't think there's anything left. (laughs) 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 This isn't really an open-ended question anymore. What do you want? I'm like uh, uh, a sandwich, maybe on TV. <laughs> <laughs> All fine. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's precious. <laughs> so anyway, that was my dirty talk story. <clears throat> uh, dirty talk's always funny. 
it's very it's hard still- to do. I think uh, to keep that level of sincerity without say, to, to still keep it sexy. There's a lot of uh, risk taken in, in dirty talking. And uh, guys are awful. It- guys sound the worst, no matter what. How many guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time a guy is trying to talk to me, I'm like, no, thank you. Corny. <laughs> How it's, are guys the worst, Anthony? Well, I mean, what the, what do we in, do wrong? In, in porn, it's always slightly violent. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. uh, and it's gross. It just doesn't, it doesn't uh, have the same kind of flair. As when a when a woman does it, it's like it's, it's awesome. Yeah, but I think it, that's you're, that's coming from a heterosexual male perspective. When we hear male dirty talking, we're like, Ugh. but then also, like I know uh, some women. You know what else is gross is men's bodies. <laughs> 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 yeah, what's with all that uh, hair? I have found uh, quite a few women just enjoy a good man growl. Mm. A growl. Yeah, kind of yeah. like uh, your your. You're just feeling like a, mm. a guttural, yeah. Yeah, a guttural growl. Oh, like that? Uh, I don't know if you know what growl. I think you're thinking of howl. Oh, howl. <laughs> yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Like that? I think you're thinking ay, of ay, owl. Ay. No. <laughs> is it this? <laughs> it's scowl? Scowl. Did you mean yeah. scowl? Uh, that's what that is. <laughs> if I had a whistle right now, I think you're thinking of this. And then a whistle. <coughs> foul. This is a foul. Oh, a foul. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like that. This? No, that's a towel. Oh, that's a towel. <laughs> oh, yeah. A towel. Damn it. All right. Wait, do, <laughs> they mean, do they mean... I think you have to get up, Rob. I know, mean, you son of a bitch. You got everything right there. <laughs> do they mean poop stuff? <laughs> yeah, bowel. Yeah. <laughs> Girls love it when you just take a shit <laughs> while you're going down. <laughs> as long as you grunt while you're doing it. Like... <clears throat> <clears throat> I, I once was talking to Chris Bowers um, about uh, uh, dirty talking, and uh, I forget how it came up, but it was it was something like uh, uh, I was I was like, you know what women like when you go down on them? It's it's not about you know, it's about how loud you are. Uh, you know, it's not the it's not the size of the boat; it's the sound of the boat horn. <laughs> we're just, I can't, we're just kind of like spitballing like that bad sex advice <laughs> yeah wait but uh can that can you put that into this bit like not only is he bad at at uh dirty talk but he's bad at sex advice or talking uh, about sex yeah with I might friends afterwards. together yeah it's not about the size of the boat but about ooh, the size ooh. of the stereo on the boat yeah, let's let's imagine a group of Mormon guys all like give each other locker advice. room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just kind of oh. like chumming it up in the locker room. Like, yeah, I bet. The I bet like, she, we mean like it when you your know. cum is really wet. Yeah, <laughs> tell them how wet it yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. The, the the advice is the bad, dirty talk. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. Just start saying yeah. all this. And if you go down on her, the most important thing is that you're loud. Yeah. <laughs> It's all about volume down there. Anything, anything that you can think of that's loud, a siren, <laughs> animal noises, exploding. Crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they like when you go, yuck, <laughs> really loud. Um, uh, all right. This is a true story. My, okay. my first time <laughs> doing Dirty Talk, I uh, said something really unsexy and made me realize that I needed to actually try to figure out how to do it correctly uh this girl asked just she requested it and i said i'm gonna have sex with you for 12 hours that was my dirty talk (laughs) where did you come up with 12 specifically i don't know i just thought you could have said all night 12 hours that would have been been good that would have been good (laughs) (laughs) even i'm gonna rail you for a while i think would have been better (laughs) <laughs> yeah. This will go on indefinitely. <laughs> Jared was just thinking about how much fun he had watching Twilight Zone marathons when he was a kid. Was like, <laughs> Those were 12 hours, so why can't <laughs> sex be? Um, I'm, I'm just glad we got to tell some sex stories. I'm going nice. to do more jokes like that. <laughs> What's the name of our uh, After Dark version of Is This Anything? Yeah. No, this is, is for this anything, this is is this for anything after- we fucked. <laughs> yeah, this is after we transitioned into a sex podcast. 
<laughs> so <laughs> it'll still be called Is This Anything? <laughs> Um, I feel like no one actually gave you any feedback on the joke. But well, you know, when yeah. the joke is perfect, you don't really need any. Yeah, it is. And a your good time's joke. up. <laughs> did yeah, right. we did we we came up with the framing? Yeah. We said maybe the woman says up afterwards. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Are you thinking of putting more um, e- examples? I mean, I guess if you do it as like the Mormons in a in a locker room, I guess there'd be more. But if you if you don't use that, are you going to have other examples? Of, oh, oh of, th- of things of, of dirty of talk. That's bad, wrong. Yeah, I think it's just such a wide premise. There's, it's so easy to come up with uh, funny things that that are bad, dirty talking. So I'll just think, uh, and 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 uh, I'm sure I can come up with with a few. I did such a good job having sex with this girl this weekend that as soon as we were done, she had to masturbate. <laughs> that is it's funny. like a Ben Shapiro. I, she was so turned on. Oh, is it Ben Shapiro? Because that's um, I've heard Pat Dixon do that. Oh, no, no. Oh, for I, real? I yeah. Oh, okay. We, we've lost uh, the flow, guys. Yeah. No one knows what we're talking about. I, I, I think I've got the Brett thing. I know exactly what everyone did wrong here. <laughs> Success <laughs> has gone to our heads. <laughs> well, you know, we had, a, we had a good chunk where I don't have to edit <clears throat> us out. I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure Brett was just saying Ben Shapiro as in referring to the WAP thing. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, Anthony, but there's, there's a There's not comic. a real joke, but there's you're a, saying that. There's a comedian, though, musical comedian guy in New York, Ben Shapiro. Oh. Oh, well, so I thought maybe he Oh, that too. is an unfortunate name for him. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. There's a. But he yeah. probably can get on Fox Red Eye whenever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> At least a couple times by accident. <clears throat> uh, but Brett has some more jokes. I think. Oh, do you mind? Yeah, you guys, you guys mind if I do another joke? Of yeah, course. whatever. I think he was kidding about the time. We, we fucked around a lot. <laughs> Somebody asked me if I like lists. And I was like, it really depends on the list. You know, chores, no. Schindler's, yes. <laughs> I find the premise of this joke suspicious. No, this is really... I'm like, a, this is true. Well, I want a person I, to ask I, you if they like lists, if you like lists. Okay, but oh, maybe that's a good note because I can give you the, mm. the backstory and maybe that'll help. Yeah. Uh, I was going to go on a video date and uh, this lady had a listography, I think it's called. Um, it, it was like a book where it's kind of like Mad Libs, but whoever can fill in the most things on the list first wins. And it's like top 10 cities you want to visit. Oh, okay. um, and so she said, so she started off by saying, do you like lists? And that was my response. Oh, so it was a real thing. It was a real thing. You know, I read this, uh, you posted this joke on Facebook yesterday or something. Um, and I didn't read it weird. Um, uh, that sounds in- suspicious already. <laughs> I mean, that feels defensive. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't I, read it as weird. I, I, oh, okay. I, no, yeah, yeah. it's the way he says. Like, I didn't read it weird. I don't read. I don't read things weird. I don't <laughs> say them out loud with a funny voice or anything. Yeah, I read it. So and I don't like, like, What do you think about that? lists? That's how I read it. Did you guys it, not read it? It was the long? best of times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> what are you doing? Me. I'm just sitting I'm down sorry, with a good book. I read this really weird. I, that's all. <laughs> I completely misread the situation. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so you didn't read it weird. I, I didn't read it as, weird. I, as I, weird. I did. I did miss that word. I didn't read it as weird at all. I, I, I've been asked, you know, in different contexts, you know, what I feel about lists, like, but in, in a different context. So I don't. I didn't think it was weird. Even if you just oh, oh like it, it wasn't. Up. It wasn't not believable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It feels super weird to me. Uh, hmm. the, the explanation makes sense, but to me, it sounds like somebody saying, "Like, do you like categories? <laughs> do you like groups?" Uh, hmm. I, it's it's weird because the the explanation is cool and it might make the joke funnier, but I also really like it as a one liner. So, yeah. and I I didn't think it was weird either, but right. but maybe I'm in the minority. Maybe it, maybe it needs the, to explain. I posted it, and it didn't do great. So, I mean, maybe there's something to that, Jarrett. I also am I'm curious if people uh, inherently know that Schindler's List was, was a good thing. Yeah, like that's, was, that's a possibility, right? Because most people think Schindler's List is Holocaust. <laughs> mm-hmm. So they think it's bad. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I don't really know. I never watched the movie. Yeah, and the movie sucks so, so much. No. So I don't... <laughs> I have kind of heard that the list was good. It was like somebody, he was trying to save them, right? That was, yeah, the list of yeah. Jews that he was able to uh, claim yeah. were workers and, and save from, from being brought to, to death camps. 
Uh, that that was the actually the one thing I did think when I was reading it quickly I, was the exact thought. I was like, hmm, I wonder if it's common knowledge that <laughs> that was ultimately the good thing. <laughs> Which would make it a terrible joke if you <laughs> if, it, if it was just a bad Holocaust joke. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if I had to explain it in the joke where I go. Uh, chores? No. Schindler's list? Uh, uh, Schindler's? Yes. Which was, it was a good thing, by the way. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> so I don't know if you're aware, was... but. <laughs> Schindler's? Yes. I love lists of that save Jews. <laughs> which is what Schindler's list did. Or maybe everybody who read your joke was racist and they just didn't agree. They didn't like Schindler's lists. That they were could like, be it. That's that 200 Jews that we list. missed. Whose turn's next? Uh, I think it's Rob, right? It's my turn next, and I will start recording. Record on this computer. Boom. Thank you guys for listening to my jokes. I have a couple of things today. One of them is racist. Would you like me to start off with that one? Ooh. Yeah, might as well. It's racist towards Jews, though. Are we okay with that? Mm. Do it second. (laughs) Uh, I, this is just a dumb thing that I was thinking of. It has nothing to do with anything. It just has to do with like word wordplay in my mind. Well, it's it's racist, but um, since I have juice here, I figured I would tell it, and then you guys could just tell me to not tell it. Since I have juice here, <laughs> is this the bit? <laughs> that was uh, Hitler justification too. He's like, I mean, I have them here. I've got so many. <laughs> They're here anyway. You might as well do something. About it. Um, if, uh, all right, here we go. If someone rips you off, you're not supposed to say, I got gypped. I never, apparently the term gypped is short for gypsy. So you shouldn't say it because it's actually like derogatory towards gypsies. Um, that doesn't affect me. I never said gypped though. I always say they Jewed me. So I, that's not a thing that I've had to worry about. That's mostly it. I also have, you're not supposed to say chintzy. Because that actually refers to the Chinese. It's oh, like a wow. derogatory thing about Chinese. But I've always said Jewy, so I, I don't, <laughs> again, it's never affected me. Uh, I think I could, uh, you could make that joke work if you had another reason for saying Jew that isn't about Jews. Like, because uh, okay. I also have to, I, I used to have this, you know, Puerto Rican uh, nanny who, who would always say, Jew, give me that. You know, like so, there's some kind of other, you know, I'm not, I don't want it to, I don't want it to just misdirect to another racist thing, but right, if you can misdirect right, right, right. to an, an innocuous thing, then, then I feel like then you can actually get away with that joke. But I'm it's yeah. fine. enough to, to say that I think that that's okay. I think I am. I think I'm Puerto You Rican. think you're what? Puerto Rican? I think I'm Puerto Rican enough to say that that would be okay for you to do. I, I, I am so, I don't give a shit about this, this <laughs> joke. <laughs> but you know that people but do say, say that, it. right? That's a real thing that people say. That, that they, 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 they Jewed me? Or Jew, like they, they'll I, say, I, I think it's... Uh, I didn't they, actually know Jew, that. Jew, Jew me down or something like that. I oh, think well, is. then that becomes even less funny than it was before. <laughs> no, oh, oh, you didn't know that? No, no, I didn't know people Jew me oh, down. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, actually the, the, the first time I've ever heard like straight up anti-Semitism. And I was like, What? So. And they were just like, what? That's what you say. So. <laughs> and I was like, do you realize it's like really not okay? And they were like, but that's what you say. <laughs> like that was just a common. And I was, I was like blown away that like they had, they were, you know, there were that not only they said that, but obviously the people around them said that. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Nothing about this is fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just cut it up? No. Let's see if we can just move it on. <laughs> I always wonder, do we cut these out or do we like have a little teachable moment for, <laughs> for people out there? I never know. Well, let's ask the Jews. <laughs> uh, I would prefer you could Jew it out of here. <laughs> Jew it out. <laughs> Remember old, good old... He used to say that, right? In, uh, Uncle Jewy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. man. I'm kind of surprised that you never heard that. The Jewy Gladstone. It's <clears throat> like I mean I've heard it in in New York. No, I have I, I haven't. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to as long as we're including all of that in Rob's epiphany. Uh, I wouldn't be against it. It's really up to Rob, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
wasn't that, it wasn't that fun. Yeah, maybe we could get rid of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's call the whole thing off. All right, here we go. All right, uh, so here's, thank you guys for listening to my jokes. <laughs> Jews! <laughs> 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 good God, yeah. Hey, wait, Rob, what, what are they good for? <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> some <laughs> things. <laughs> some things. Give it to me, Rob. No, what said, if you did the same me. joke but in German? <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, uh, so it's Rob's turn next. Uh, <laughs> great, thank you guys so much. I've got a couple of good ones for you today, um, and one racist one. You guys want me to start with the racist one? <laughs> Oh, no, I'm caught in a Jew loop. <laughs> a Jew? <laughs> a Jew. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much. We're going to start right now with some jokes that I have for you. Because right my turn just ended. Because my turn. Because <laughs> Brett's turn now just ended. Now it stops. Starting up. Turn. Starting <laughs> now. Slate. There yeah. we go. Got a little clap track. Um... <laughs> One thing I wanted to start with was, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, you know, this was a dated thing, and I never said it back at the time because it refers to two uh, current things. Uh, but I was going to wanted to share it with you guys anyway. Where that Beirut explosion, I was thinking if that Beirut explosion happened in the U.S., Trump would say that we need to look at deaths as a percentage of explosions. Um, <laughs> But that references not only the explosion, but also the interview that he had like two weeks ago. So, or more maybe. And by the time <coughs> this actually airs, yeah, this will air in like October. Three months from now. <laughs> so, I'm going to start my set now. Here we go. <laughs> something racist. Something racist. Hey. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. So I will start right now. Here we go. Um, okay. The N word. Uh, <laughs> this has got to be sweet revenge for Jarrett trying to do uh, an intro the other day, like a few weeks ago. <laughs> Can you use this? Mexicans. Is there something there? Jared's a whole different guy when he has air conditioning. <laughs> oh, boy. It is um, wow, so sweet. Oh, hey, Rob, we're all yeah. wondering. <laughs> is this anything? Woo. All right. Thank you, guys. I had this idea. Um, so I don't agree with ACAB, like all cops are bad, but I am feeling like I-S-L-A-A-L-O-C-A-B. Like, it seems like an awful lot of cops are bad. <laughs> can, we get, like can we start spray painting that on some of the walls? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it bastards or is it bad? It's, I think it's bastards. Oh, it's bastards? Oh, yeah. Okay. But um, I, I love this idea of, of making it longer. I, I, uh, a long time ago, I tried to do a similar thing with the What Would Jesus Do? bumper stickers mm. the wwjd i made it like this super long uh uh is it ac ac acronym is that acronym, mm -hmm. acronym. Mm -hmm. uh but I, I love this concept uh yeah i know it's i know i'm not making any new joke structure here you know people have done that before uh but i just was i was thinking of the acab thing and i was like oh this might be fun i yeah. might make it a little longer okay um i i i Opposite to the, this is my impression of, uh, and then a short joke, uh, I feel differently about acronyms where I'm like, you could do as many of those. I love that. Uh, I think they're always funny and uh, they're always going to be unique. And uh, to me, it's just like, it's just like, it's part of just doing comedy. It's like, a, it's a technique more than it is like a, 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 a somebody's bit or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't saying it because I was telling you that. I own it or anything. I know. I no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just, no, I'm just aware. I'm just aware that fun, it exists. Yeah. I, yeah. I also think it's fun and I've tried it before. 
Um, I think I've told you guys before, like the joke that I never find that gets old is whenever they have, you know, something man and they just change it into a name and the Simpsons have done it, whatever. Like when Duff Man just became regular old Barry Duffman. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That yeah, joke yeah. Just, <laughs> and then I think it was Family Guy with Funland, but the owner of Funland was just Bob Funland. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That too. That's great. <laughs> There's also a 30 Rock where um, uh, Tracy Morgan is taking pills and uh, Tina Fey is like, your pills come from Dr. Spaceman? Oh and then God, so and then you meet Chris Parnell, and he's like, my name is Dr. Leo Spichemin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I forgot how they pronounce it. Spichemin. Yeah, that's Leo Spichemin. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, there, w- this is slightly related, but another Simpsons joke where um, the LT Smash was supposed to be like a music producer, but in reality, he was... It was a really weird convoluted plot to get people to join the Navy. I remember Lisa that. Lisa figures it out because on his name plate on his desk, it says LT Smash, but one of the dots isn't really a dot. And she takes it off. She's like, wait a minute. This isn't LT Smash. It's Lieutenant Smash. And he's like, that's right. Lieutenant LT Smash. <laughs> 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 that's great so it's like I love I love the joke I don't care how many times it comes up it always makes me laugh so um yeah <clears throat> um <laughs> that was one thing I had I had a little uh tag add on to the bit that I was pitching you guys before so um for you listeners who watch each episode uh you might get a kick out of this and viewers uh, who listen and the viewers who listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I was, uh, I, was, I was sort of chronicling all the, the, the different categories of people that, uh, that exist in, a, um, in like an addictive household. Uh, there's the, uh, the, the lost child, the, the hero, the enabler, the dependent person, the mascot, whatever, scapegoat. And uh, I was kind of going through my own family and who is what. But all I did was I, I listed me as the mascot, my brother Tim as the scapegoat, my brother Steve as the lost child. So what I wanted to tack onto this was which one of us was the hero. And I, honestly, all three of us at one point or another fought over that role. And not literally, of course. We weren't sitting there during one of my mom's benders like, I want to be the hero. You got to be the hero during Christmas. You should be the scapegoat. Shut up, lost child. Nobody's listening to you. I just kind of wanted to do that little additional add-on as well. It what becomes like a, like a I'm Spartacus kind of moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, an actual literal argument as far as who's going to be this role. Um, I, I like it. I just want uh, I just want more specific examples. Like, I got to be the hero when it, at Christmas when or you got to be the hero at Christmas when you, you know, picked mom out of the gutter. Mm. Oh yeah. Right, right, well, right. I you know? held her hair back when she was puking during right. Thanksgiving. Something like that. Oh, okay. And then more examples. Can you think of the logic of why? the children would fight over being the hero when, just based on these examples, it sounds okay. like this is the responsibility of, it, it's the most responsibility in the family, mm-hmm. you know, when yeah. mom, you know, crashes her car and you have to, you know, like pick her up on your tricycle or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's something that people are trying to avoid. Maybe it's something that kids are trying uh, to avoid. To oh, okay. avoid being the hero? Yeah. yeah, having that responsibility on your shoulders. Well, I guess uh. part of the hero dumb is also that you are praised as sort of mm. the good child and you're the angelic one and you can do nothing wrong. Well, you know, Robert's always, you know, good. The scapegoat's getting blamed for everything and sort of this <clears throat> black sheep. So maybe that's a, a one positive thing to point to. Mm. And I could just better describe what that, what that status is uh, at first, potentially. I don't know if this is your necessarily your vibe, but it kind of makes mm. me think about like, like in fantasy books and movies, you know, the hero always has like some epic poem ri- written about them. Mm. And so maybe that can be a draw for you kids. Like, you know, they're going to, uh, you know, they're going to, they're going to tell tales about me from far and wide. <laughs> uh, the legend of the boy who, who cleaned up his mom's vomit on Tuesday. 
you know. <laughs> I like that it's just Tuesday because we all went through holidays. <laughs> That's really funny. If yeah. you really and you really wanted to get into it, you could do, you know, like a stanza or two, a line or two, you know, right. so something limericky, so it sounds kind of. There once was a boy from Tolkien. <laughs> He put all of the puke in the bucket. <laughs> uh, Something like that. Oh, gather round and sit to rest and hear the tale of Rob Brian. He's the one to do. play on a lute. You know, I like that. If I come, he could angle. do his homework even though his mom was crying. <laughs> <laughs> the hero. You know, it's, it's interesting because maybe, maybe, maybe the. Uh, the angle then is to sort of deconstruct that, like even that title. It's just a it's just a lofty title mm. to give to a kid who, as you said, you know, did these couple things here and there. Right. Um, the bards won't sing of of your deeds. Right. I think it's a good way to get into that. Yes, exactly. Right. Um, huh. That's that's an interesting point. I like that. Did you all argue about who was supposed to be the hero? No, it's kind of a weird concept because, because what I truly mean, the, the reality of the situation is that I don't think any of us felt fit neatly into that category. But we all had these tendencies of, of herodom at times in our oh, lives, okay. <clears throat> which kind of is exemplified by like overachieving or um, trying to like have all your ducks in a row because you, know, you want to make sure everything's good and right uh, oh, to so counteract all subtle. the negative that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I definitely but, had qualities of that nature where I'm just like, I'm a straight A student and I'm not doing anything wrong and, and yeah. whatever. And my other brothers has sort of exemplified those things at points too. All three of us had these, had kind of like that chip on our shoulder. Um, so I don't know. We all embodied it at some point or another. I was I just trying see. to think if there's some funny or clever or interesting way yeah. to, to say I, that information without just saying it. But I'm not sure I don't if, know it's, if true. it's uh I don't know if my original idea was that funny or interesting. And I don't know if this <clears> is funny, but I was just thinking structurally... If one of you didn't argue about being the hero, that was probably the hero. Because mm, cool. there's never a hero that's like, hey, did you guys see that? I totally, <laughs> that was me. I just. That's very funny. <laughs> uh, that's a Brian Regan thing, though. I loved that he Is did it? on. Yeah, he did it on like Letterman years back when Sully landed the plane. He, uh, <laughs> he was saying, he's like, that guy Sully, you know, what a hero, you know. And he's like, here's what I loved. He was at a press conference and they said, so, do you think you're a hero? And Sully was like, <laughs> Nah, I'm no hero. And everyone was like, that's what makes him a hero. <laughs> but he's like, could you, could you imagine? Yeah. Could you imagine if he's like, yeah, did you see that freaking thing? I landed it in the Hudson. He broke. He broke. <laughs> it's true. Everybody would have thought he was a dick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so. Do you think it'd be funny if you had like <clears throat> one, one of the siblings never argued about being a hero because he was blah 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 the thing that makes it seem like he's the hero you know it's like we always used to argue about like who was the hero in the family not not aaron though aaron was always just like you know on a hill staring in the distance with his golden hair blowing in the breeze <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what that would even be is he the martyr like what is what is that mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, hey, I, I think you're you're implying like he whoever this person who it was obviously the hero right yeah Oh, By yeah, describing, you know, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. But I think that, that, that probably wouldn't fit in, in truth for, for this bit because this is going into what yes. actually happened, right? Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, one whole, the whole thing The whole thing's a little, a little convoluted, so. But, what if your mom wasn't an alcoholic? Hey, that works. That's funnier. <laughs> <laughs> That's way funnier. Oh, my God. We should do an episode of this where we are shitty TV executives instead of actually <laughs> doing with our jokes. <laughs> Just being like, hmm, what if, all right, what if instead of your mom being an alcoholic, she worked in <laughs> advertising and she was black? <laughs> but boy, was she sassy. <laughs> <laughs> and what if instead of a brother, you had a hot sister? <laughs> huh? Huh? All your friends are like, ooh, I want to get with the sister, you know? How about it's a hot stepsister and you're kind of into her? <laughs> wow, this is turning really good. And one of us is a porn executive <laughs> giving porn. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh oh, is that a Muppet alien from space? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great, that's a great sitcom, guys. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that's all super funny. Yeah, so those are the only things I had uh, to bring today. And nothing else. I didn't bring anything else today. No, nothing I don't else think was discussed. Mm-hmm. Just, just those Zero. couple ideas. I do think that it's funny that after the sensitive information that we edited out, you then did a joke about all cops are bastards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's Anthony's turn now, right? Oh, yeah. It is my turn. All right. I got That's some ideas. It's bastards are not bad, by the way. I didn't know that. Bastards? I mean, uh, we actually, I thought the same thing, but I, when I did the ACAB interactive joke, uh, I don't know if you remember doing that. Um, that was fun. Oh, you got corrected as well? Yeah. Oh, I also was I like, I, I, thought, I thought that. But I forget, too. I keep thinking it's all cops are bad. I think bad is a better, it's, it's just better. Bastard, bastard makes it sound kind of lame. Bastard. Yeah, it's like, why do you have to bring single mothers into this? <laughs> yeah, into this, right, exactly. I know a lot of single mothers that are way... Oh, no, the, the kids are, ba- are, are bastards. I know a lot yeah. of people born out of wedlock that are way better than cops. Mm. Yeah. It also feels kind of antiquated. It's like you're calling them rogues, you know? <laughs> Damn, dastardly cops. <laughs> 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 Dastardly cops. Um, all right, so I have some. Uh, got a couple things here. Uh, is that all I had? I thought I had something else. Okay. Being in my thirties is uh, different than being in my twenties. I still do all of the same things, except now sometimes it hurts. <laughs> I like. Seems a little, 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 little well trodden. I don't know. Is there anything else that's gonna give me some more? Not for me. That's all I got for this. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want an example, and I think within the realm of that example, you can surprise us. Um, it, it, maybe something that's kind of nominal that <clears throat> you could do that really wouldn't hurt. Um, People are always amazed by how I'm still drinking like a teenager. And the only downside is I need to take two weeks off afterwards. Something like that. Mm. Okay, so just talking about recovery time of, of certain things. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I wanted to flip it on its ear and I apologize. I didn't like, I just, I know that getting older and the hurts and, the, and all that stuff, right? I just have, I've heard a lot of it before. So there's yeah. something about me that wants, I want, if something could emotionally hurt, that would trick me and make me laugh. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. That would be really funny to me. If somehow you said, I used to look at pictures of my something and now they're obviously gone and out of your life or dead or whatever. And you're like, now it hurts <laughs> or something <laughs> or ah, whatever. But if something emotionally hurt you, I think, I think now we're in new territory of something mm-hmm. I haven't heard before. Uh, but would that eliminate this setup? Or are you saying, I set that up and then I jump into this other thing and then mm-hmm. later I say, and that hurts. You know, yeah, like, because, yeah, because then people who are going to laugh at that are going to laugh at that. But the people like me in the audience are going to be like, mm, I feel like this has been done-ish. But then you hit yeah. me with that second part and I'll be like, what? Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't think that I would do it just the way that it is now because I know it's you know I know that that concept has has been done but that's sort of sort of why I brought it brought it here yeah because when we think of things hurting we think of like something active you know the playing sports you're sore or more mm-hmm. or something like that but I would love to yeah I would just love an example out of the realm of predictability mm-hmm. uh, I did think of a physical one though that might be funny like um, I, uh, I sprained my wrist giving change to a homeless guy yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) You have any change? I can't. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. I would like to think of examples, but I, again, I feel like any example I would think of would be clearly something someone said before. Mm. Yeah. You know, I sneeze and I threw my back out. Uh, I, no, but I, I, I like where you were going with it before, Rob. Like, what is an example of, like, it hurts more, but literally be, because of the circumstances, not because you're getting older, but because, like, it is 10 years later. So, yeah. like, uh, you know. 
I, I don't know what that would be, but I, yeah. yes, I want to explore there. that. Something about my dad being dead? <laughs> sure. I'm, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm older than my dad ever was. Oh, God. Is that true? Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm 36 now. I think my dad was maybe 31, maybe 32. Wow. So I've been older than my dad uh, for a couple of years now. So any yeah, photo of him... Yeah, that hurts. Yeah. 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 So now now we're pick now we're hitting on the funny. So now <clears throat> can, you, can you tell me the joke again cuz I want to make sure that I the joke match was, the uh... being in my 30s is different than being in my 20s. Mm-hmm. I still do all of the same things except now sometimes it hurts. Like when I was in my 20s, I could play basketball all day. But now that I'm in my 30s, uh I cry because my dad never made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> that's great right, right. Um, never made I, it as far as a little vague but yes yeah. that, that, that concept yeah there is something that's I like, cry because I'm older than my dad ever was mm-hmm. yeah when he died yeah um, that's good good misdirect uh, yeah and only uh, you know my 20s I could play basketball all day and now I just miss my dad all the time <laughs> in my 20s I played basketball all day never thought about my dad once <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that example is really good, but I did I did think of one more along the lines of uh, what Rob was saying. Um, you know, when I, in my twenties, I could have sex with my girlfriend all night, but now uh, when I try to have sex with her, it just hurts so much because her husband kicks the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, I I wasn't sure what to do with this because I I did think it was it was sort of a uh, you know, kind of obvious uh, premise, but I, I like the idea of presenting it like it's a joke, but then going into a, another joke. That's that's uh, I like I like that one. Like I, I like Brett's uh, mm. last one. That's that's. What about cool. uh, you know in my tw- so you could do like the basketball example. It was like, he used to be able to play basketball all day, and now I just really miss my dad because he passed away. And you can say, <laughs> when in my 20s, I used to be able to have sex all night, and now Jen left. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, by the way, is in a happy relationship. He's with a girl, and he's been with one for some time. Can you add that into the joke, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> She said all of okay, her tags are him that's great, either having some it? torrid affair or him <laughs> being alone and miserable. Yeah, I can't do His those girlfriend's in the living room like... She's in the other room. <laughs> uh, that's I imagine great, you, can you make it that you're a married couple? <laughs> I'm imagining you doing that, that joke about really missing your, your girlfriend and your real girlfriend just in the back being really supportive, waving. <laughs> Great joke, great, great joke, baby. Great joke, baby. Okay, I like that. So maybe, maybe I'll think about that, and maybe that's one that I'll bring back with, with some new examples. Because um, at least now I have an idea of where to go with that. Yeah, even just um, now, now I just miss my dad. It's just like everybody can fill in the blanks. Yeah, and that's just so funny. E- even yeah. you know, even if they don't have all the information, even if it's misleading a, a smidge because it would make it seem like he was alive in your 20s. It doesn't matter. Yeah, like, it doesn't that, matter. That, that's enough of a thing. Where you're just like, oh, and if I've already done, because I love trying to do these dead dad jokes, so potentially I've already done some in my set. Yeah. So that even as a callback to another yeah. dead dad joke, it doesn't matter when he died. I, you know, I like the premise, the premise that you're older than your dad ever was is like, I want to explore that for ever that's that that's a such a weird interesting concept yeah it's i've i've tried to, i've mentioned it a few times on stage during like in the in the midst of uh you know a, a, de- a more developed dead dad bit mm-hmm. and sometimes people think it's kind of a, a funny idea but a lot of times it bums them out so i i never know if i should explore it more that but. specific concept of being older than your dad ever was mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. but all that stuff is hard it's it's always such a struggle to get the crowd to laugh at my dad being dead. Yeah. No, no. It it always helps if somebody in the audience Crowds. is kind of like, "My dad's also dead." And then I'm like, "All right, when when did he when did he die?" And then we have like this kind of competition oh, about you know, uh like who, who wins, wins the, the one whose dad died more recently? <laughs> I don't know. 
I think that's, that's something I also play with. You know, it's like, oh, well, you win. You were younger. And it's like, oh, <laughs> actually. Have you, have you guys heard all of Anthony's uh, dead dad jokes? I haven't. Some but I didn't just think of one. What is uh, great? Maybe, maybe this is one of yours. Let, let me know. Uh, I, my, my dad, I'm, I'm older than my dad was when he died, uh, which sucks because I, now I can't ask him f- for the advice of, of what it's like to be 34 because he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I've done that. No, <laughs> I, it's yours. <laughs> I think I've said like something like "I win" or something like that. Or well, well, uh, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> Anthony Stad also he is really alive. A band. <laughs> <laughs> what if instead of your dead dad, it was a hot <laughs> chick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he also abandoned them before he died. And that plays into the jokes as well. It just makes it sadder, but but also funnier. <laughs> because he said that, I think Anthony's punchline, one of them is that he died doing what he loved, abandoning us. Abandoned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one usually works. Which is just so awful and funny. But it's great. <laughs> Ooh, you could add, could, so speaking to Brett's joke, uh, or, or concept, he's like, now I'm older than my dad ever was, which is sad because I don't get to ask him about any advice, like how to abandon his children. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like such a failure. Like my dad had already abandoned a family at this point <laughs> in his life, you know. Oh, and I'm not even great, married yet. He's got a great joke about that. I'm just going to tell it again. <laughs> just I'm tell, tell all your jokes. jokes. <laughs> uh, uh, God damn it. He's like, well, no, it was about your mom. It was about the, about the... I couldn't imagine raising kids with my mom. Could, uh, fuck. Nah, I'm not going to remember it. We're going to have to go back to it. But, uh, uh, is this one of your uh, dad jokes? Um, I remember <laughs> after he abandoned us, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out where he was. I even went to the police and asked them to keep an eye out. Then one day the police came to my house and they were like, all right, Anthony, we've got good news and bad news. <laughs> we know where he is. And here are the directions to the cemetery. <laughs> oh, God. oh, that I like that though. The good news and bad news thing. That's very mm-hmm. funny. All right, it's yours. Because <laughs> my dad's just dead. He didn't abandon us, so I can't use them. I don't. I don't know who. All I know is that my my parents split up. By the time I was born, mm-hmm. so, so who abandoned I who? Know, I don't know. Maybe who abandoned you abandoned who. him. He he started coming around a little bit when I was around three. Mm-hmm. And, uh, when you when I, you started getting success, yeah. <laughs> you then, started walking and talking, and all of a sudden, dad shows up. <clears throat> but then he died when I was four. So, who knows? Hey, we all have a dead parent. Oh wow! Hey, all right, that's what. Oh, that's what binds us together. Hmm. That's why we get along so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't like Brett before his parents. Died. <laughs> <laughs> I was a piece of shit before my mom died. <laughs> this only happened months ago. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen watching, it totally used to be bad. worse, if you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Do I have, I have this other, I don't know if I have time for another quick. Yeah, yeah, we've just been... Telling our own stories, I think. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, this is related to, um, to death, so I thought this would be a good time to throw it in there. Uh, when, uh, okay, so this is, just to give you context, I tweeted something that, a while back about this paranormal investigator that was, like, I, think, I guess, sort of famous that died, uh, but that's old news, so I'm trying to make it into uh, a joke that I could do any time. So uh, when a paranormal investigator dies, it's not the end of the work. Uh, it's, sorry. When a paranormal investigator dies, it's not the end of their work. It's kind of like a promotion. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Jared's kind of silently laughing. No, I like it because I'm, I'm imagining like what happens when he gets summoned by like another paranormal you know, investigator, and and now he's a ghost, and he's like yeah. amateur. <laughs> <laughs> or they're bummed. They're like, I thought I was retired. <sighs> I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> the logic of it hurts me because it's like a promotion. Like, but you're not. You're now the subject. You're the one studying the thing. So you know, you don't get promoted. 
Uh, yeah, homicide detective. If he gets murdered, he's not like I yeah. got promoted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the promotion thing was was uh, something that I added now just to bring it in. So maybe that doesn't. I guess that doesn't work. But is it funny that it's saying that it's it's this paranormal investigator and they're dead, but their their work is not is not over because of that? Hmm. Yeah, I do like that. Like, I wonder if okay, I wonder if a you know, like a spiritual person might feel comforted by death because they know where they're going. But if a paranormal investigator, does he feel comforted by death? Or does, or does he just think, oh, man, I'm just going to haunt this house for like 100 <laughs> years. <laughs> and so, a bunch of jackasses with like e-meters are going to come in trying to read my waves <laughs> or whatever. Like, does he know what's coming, what's in store for him? Effectively. Or is he like a ghost that's trying to still do the work? Like it's like a sixth sense kind of thing where he doesn't know he's dead. So he's I like, think I see uh, a ghost, and they're like, "Yeah, we're all fucking ghosts." <laughs> I think it'd be really funny if he has like a lot of really strong opinions about how to be a ghost because he was a paranormal investigator for so long. He's and as a ghost, he's doing things like this: is how you push a chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny you said that. I was thinking the opposite, Jared. I was thinking that he was going to be critical of other paranormal investigators trying to investigate his stuff. And mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. he's like, that's not how you... I mean, I'm not even going to say hello if you <laughs> shoddy work like this. There's not nearly enough candles. Yeah. You expect me to say something to you, idiots? You call this a seance? <laughs> Knock over what about- the Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> what about this? He's a paranormal investigator. He dies. He sees. He thinks he sees a ghost. But he's looking in the mirror. Mm. So he's trying to, he still thinks he's, he's continuing his work. But he's not. He's just looking at himself. And that's how he realizes he's dead. I don't know. I don't, no? I don't see that one hmm. personally. Yeah, I think the other ideas were better. Damn, I thought that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought that was the one. Do you have a jingle for it? <laughs> yeah, it goes like this. <laughs> Have I ever told you guys my idea about a low Ouija board where you just <laughs> you just summon an Italian guy? I, I don't think so, but I love that. <laughs> you all hold hands, you light candles, and then it's like, it's a me, a Luigi. Have a coin, bling, bling. <laughs> That's it. I never shot it, but it's it's something I wanted to shoot for years. Oh, that's so funny. Mm-hmm. I never got around to it. I just uh, it's I it's all the same ghost, but they all have a cartoonish Italian accent. <laughs> like, Your mother killed me. <laughs> 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 Mamma mia! Oh man, Anthony, if you want to cut this out because it's too racist, just go ahead. Just <laughs> no, I, I'm Italian enough to to let this one go. Yeah, me too. And I got the Luigi mustache. <laughs> Do you uh, see how I died? <laughs> I fell into a hole. <laughs> I think there is uh, something funny about the the looking in the mirror thing. I, maybe I gotta word it better, but I, I think there's something there. All right. Uh, can I tell you guys something funny about being racist towards Italians? My uh, Kirsten once. Because uh, I'll sometimes tease Kirsten for doing like Italian accents and being like, it's very offensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, one time there was a news article that popped up on her Twitter about like a lightning strike in Italy that killed like eight people. And she showed it to me and she went, Mamma mia. <laughs> 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 that would have killed in 1890. <laughs> I, I think it's still okay to to make fun of Italian people. And and we were all talking about uh Simpsons jokes earlier. And there's mm-hmm. this Simpsons joke that I uh that I always think about where there's like there's this Italian guy and I forget which character it is, but they go, I can still hear you over there being greasy. And I always <laughs> always thought that was so funny. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, it was a different time. <laughs> Um, so right. I don't know. I, is I that everything? Timing. I don't know. I just, is that is that all my uh, is that my time? That feels about right. I dated an Italian girl once, uh, and uh, this is a joke that I wrote that I never included. But it was she she really she loved 
al dente pasta. Like it was like I was like she really liked it al dente. Like it was so raw, it was still in the package. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It was we we're still at the. It made her party. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, all right. Well, Ooh. thanks for listening to my jokes, guys, and letting me yeah, know. Yeah, great job. Did. All right. Are you guys ready? I am ready. I am ready. Are you? I'm almost ready. Are you ready to? Yeah. Right, so let me know when you're ready, Brett. Are you uh, I'm ready. recording? I am recording. Great. Okay. All right. Yeah. So this is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is funny. I think it is, but it really is just me getting mad at Republicans. So nice. Strap in, boys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna take Lou Perez <laughs> off speakerphone. <laughs> this is the voice of the descent. <laughs> yeah, Brett. If you you know how sensitive I am about talking trash about people, if I don't know like what other people think about them. Mm-hmm. That is how much I dislike Lou Perez. <laughs> now, I don't give a fuck who knows. I don't know who Lou Perez is. Are we leaving yeah, this in? Yeah, I'm curious. Who's Lou Yeah, Perez? leave it in. Fuck that guy. I don't know who that uh, is. Have you heard of We the Internet? Yeah. Mm. I've seen a couple of his videos, and I, oh, they always like rubbed me a little bit the wrong way, where I was like, it, it feels like you're attacking a group that doesn't need to be attacked. You're trying to make like the world more centrist. It's, it's and, like libertarian comedy. Um, yeah. And it, I'm like, terrible. that's just like. <laughs> Some of it is, uh, the first thing that I ever saw was the spoof of like the craziest new Netflix special. And it was just like a, a comedian going like, Trump's bad. He sucks. And then everybody was like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Um, and this is like probably 2016. So it was like, that mm-hmm. was a lot of what comedians were doing. And I thought it was great. Uh, it was a great spoof. Mm-hmm. But then there were also in the comments were a bunch of, conservatives being like this isn't funny <laughs> so that was great um and he would respond in as we the internet in the comments and it was it was it was it was great uh but yeah he's he's very centrist uh and uh you know you know how libertarians are mm-hmm. yeah and i mean if i'm being 100 percent honest i wasn't at my best in his comments when i started the fight which mm-hmm. i 100 percent did I, I was not being cool or like reaching out and trying to common ground i was just i'm angry and i am taking it out on this guy's comments thread but he was also being a giant dick about it you know so yeah. i was like okay well fuck you then How uh, all right so there? anyway this is like a week ago oh mm. yeah you want to bring him on you know this is <laughs> right now into not do it. just pitching jokes anymore yeah i don't know i mean i thought i thought what we did on the show was um you know work on jokes well, we we would have fucked guys. I don't know what Lou would do on here. Clearly is the against. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, when okay. I, when I fuck guys, I just hate the way they dirty talk. <laughs> <Save my answer. laughs> All right, here we go. Strap in, boys. <laughs> I try to be open-minded about people with other political views. I do. But I get frustrated sometimes, and that frustration does get the better of me despite my best intentions. And the thing that releases my uncontrollable political rage more than anything is the lack of self-awareness in Republicans. There seems to be this massive blind spot for them, intentional or not. Like, you know who votes Republican more than any other demographic? The undereducated. That should ring a warning bell or two, right? The strongest block of Republican voters are the people who are the least informed. I feel like if that was me, I would be like, maybe we're not the best people to be making this decision, right? I'm not saying they're dumb. I'm saying that everybody is dumb until they get an education. These people can't make an informed decision. They can't even make an educated guess. Like how many times <laughs> have people been at a Trump rally and saw everybody else who dropped out of high school and thought, sweet, no dorks, instead of, that's weird, there should be some dorks here. There should always be some dorks around in case of an emergency, like if we need to do math. Who's going to tell me how many monster energy drinks I've butt-chugged if there's no dorks? (laughs) This is truly an ominous portent. I know that's not realistic, but I do like adding one really eloquent idiot to the bunch. Like, surely there must be one, but but one dork, statistically. This absence of dorks is worrisome at best. Um, All right. 
I I like it, but I think you can just start off with um, the statistic. Uh, do you, do you know who votes more f- for um, Republicans, uh, more, than Republicans than more than anybody else? Is the uneducated, and then you can go into that, and you don't need any of the the rage and what, what and the unawareness. It's like that's just permission mm-hmm. to go into that that funny thing of like that uh, that should concern you. You know, I love when you said they can't even make an educated guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's a great line. And that it's like, I, but I feel like it's the only really good line in the in the thing. It to me, it just feels like I'm mad, except for yeah. that one line, which I think is clever. You were <laughs> mad, but when, when when you said when you said they can't make a uh, they can't even make an educated guess, it made me think mm-hmm. of that's why they always say I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That was my note. <laughs> my uh, my issue with this joke, and it actually harkens back to something I mentioned about education a long time ago, is that uh, I don't believe that uh, I or anybody else should be prejudiced against those who are uneducated. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think at the end of the day that that is something that is uh, that needs to be unduly uh, or mis or uh, disproportionately. Uh, lauded and we shouldn't be giving all the plaudits and all the money to those who are educated. But that's mm-hmm. a political stance on my part. I, I imagine that the well, uneducated that... dishwasher who works 12 hours a day, um, mm-hmm. you know, barely even speaks that much English, still has an American dream, wants to be here, let's say, uh, and works and does his thing. And that's okay. Uh, if, if that person's dumb, didn't get a good education, whatever, uh, I want them to have the same rights and be respected just as much as someone who cannot lift bricks, you know, would never it's, go to the it's army. Also, but it's everybody. I mean, there's there's an entire generation of people. They've, they've been cutting funding on education for, mm-hmm. for years. So, uh, But I think Jarrett covers that when he says you should look around and there should be some dorks around. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, that, do you like that part? Well, I think that covers uh, what Rob's concerned about, which is like you're not saying everybody has to be a dork, everybody has to be educated, but like there should be some, you have to have some smart people around, you have to have some educated people around. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, to me, the I'm not saying they're dumb, I'm saying that everybody is dumb until they get an education. Right. Uh, That to me feels like the, the, the olive branch. Where I'm not like, you're not idiots. Right. It's just, we're all idiots until we get an education. But Rob, it almost seems like what you're saying is that even that's not okay to say that everybody's dumb until they get an education. Right. I I think that, I think one of the smartest things Trump said back in 2015 was, I love the uneducated. He didn't say dumb. He didn't say whatever. He was like, oh, the uneducated. I love the uneducated. Mm. And it was a really interesting thing to say because I was like, you're right. There is a lot of people who are not going to college and they Mm -hmm. have no intention of going to college and college is bullshit to them. And they're going straight into the workforce or they are doing some kind of, you know, program where they're working uh, kind of thing, going to trade school or they're going to the military. And why are we ignoring those group of people or why are we saying free college for everybody? You know, when the, those few politicians who aren't including like trade schools in that in that thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not referring to Bernie in that sense, but like when we're when we're discluding these people who are just like education's not for me, man. Like I barely got through high school; it sucked. It's not for me. That's not what I want to do. It's not what I'm going to do, and I don't need it to survive. And I'm like, you're 100 percent right. Why should I believe that you are? I do think that the Republican Party is one of like, you know, evil people ruling over dumber people <laughs> or uneducated people, right? Um, <clears throat> so that, that's the thing that bothers me when you have the uneducated being led by those who are trying to manipulate the uneducated. So mm. that's, that's something that, that frustrates me. But I have no problem with the uneducated. They have their own feelings about things that they want from the world. They're like, I just want my family. I just want my wife or my kid, my husband, do my job, be safe. That's it. You know, maybe for every once in a while, uh, shoot my gun in, in my backyard or something. I'm like, great. Maybe there's a solve for that. Maybe I can add to the I'm not saying they're dumb section. I say, I'm not saying they're bad people, and I'm not saying they're dumb. I'm saying that everybody is dumb until they get an education. Do you think that's a good solve? Because I, I really do want to be sensitive to this because I think that everything you're saying is valid, Rob. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you think that that addresses that issue? Or is it, do you still think it is improperly maligning the uneducated? It's a great point, and I don't know. It it does seem, you know, dumb and uneducated also seem like two almost very different words. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And if you had a room filled with uneducated people, uh, what does that mean to not listen to those people, to not listen to their worries, concerns, mm. fears, where the country should be headed? But Jared, I, I, I think you're, you're both getting away from the heart of the joke, which, mm-hmm. or, or at least as I see it, the heart of the joke is what if there were no educated people around? Mm-hmm. There's not one educated mm. people. That's not good. You want to have some edu- educated people around. I, th- I think that we can all agree that it's good to have a few of those around. And I think that's what the joke is. What would that look like? That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. And I think that I don't even need to say dumb. There's, there's, it only comes up in the, one, in the one part, really. And I do go a little hard on them when I'm like, who, what if we need someone to do math? What if we need someone to mm-hmm. tell me how many monster energy strings I've butt chugged? <laughs> you know, I'm, obviously, <laughs> I'm obviously raging on, uh, on people that I, that I feel are shitty. Uh, but I can take that stuff out, and instead of saying dumb, I can just say uninformed. You know, that doesn't have that same kind yeah, of... Um, it seems like what Rob is concerned about is uh, th- the implication that people that are dumb don't have money. Is uh, that? No, not that, but, but that their voice matters less. Mm, you know, that, yeah, yeah, that their yeah. opinion or their vote or everything about them is just like... I think oh, so. They're, so they're dumb, you know. I I'm weak, <laughs> you know. If I it, when I'm weak, I seek out those who are stronger than me to to assist me and help me. So maybe the angle is like, and if you're, you know, what I'm saying like, we we work together better as a group because we all have our little strengths and weaknesses and stuff. This is this is not a worldwide opinion or thought and i think it's way too much teaching to the audience to get this across and i think mm. you'll do fully well and a lot of comics have just calling republicans stupid <laughs> yeah it's probably. go for it I, i'm just i'm infusing my own little personal thoughts here no i do may think may not be valid i do but think brett hit it on the head when he was like it's about having some educated people around and that's what that way i don't but have to be making the bit about how dumb these people are but, but how they're, they're, shouldn't there be some smart people here? Sorry, Anthony, I'm, I, I know you've tried to say it like three times, whatever it was. <laughs> no, it's a, I, I think that, and I don't know if this is going to necessarily add to the funny, but this could be maybe a structural note. Uh, part of the problem is not just that it's people that are uneducated, because a lot of people that have a lot of money and went to Ivy League schools, they also support Trump for different reasons. So now mm-hmm. you have a group of people that are actually dumb and believe him because they're hoping that he's like some kind of superhero or something and uh, some racist superhero. Mm -hmm. And then you have these people with money who support him for different reasons, but also wrong reasons. And that's why we're in such a goddamn mess. So I don't know if it's possible, you know, to address all of that in this premise, but that... That's mm-hmm. sort of because some education is good, but then people with too much money that get to go to whatever school they want, r- regardless of if they even belong there, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that those people are just as bad as the Trump people or they are the Trump yeah. people as the dumb You're people. Right. I do. I did put a line at the very end that I didn't get to where I was like, obviously, the uneducated is just one demographic that votes Republican. The other is corrupt rich assholes. I don't have a joke for that. That's just true. <laughs> um, you know, and then there's another part about, you know. What if the only educated, if you, if there are no educated uh, people around except for one and he, you know, he's wearing a tuxedo uh, that he, that, that seems to be pieced together from your whatever. I, that's some example of how he, it's very clear that this person is taking advantage of you. Mm. And that's the reason mm. that he's like, if the one educated guy in your group is doing way better than you are, then something's off. Hmm. That's not the educated guy you want. That's not the kind of dork you want. Right. That's good. That's good. I like that. Um, you want the dork that is hoping that you like him, not the dork that's so rich that he doesn't give a shit. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You guys give me some stuff to think You don't about. want your dork to also be the bully. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, that's perfect. That's, that's, that's what I was trying to get across. Was perfectly put. Um, I have this last part to this bit that is a little bit different, and it goes back to the self awareness thing that I talked about at the very beginning. So it's like I'm so sick of this the lack of self awareness in Republicans. Like, would you just look around for a second? Just look at the company that you keep: James Woods, Ted Nugent, Kirk Cameron, Kid Rock, Scott Bayo. Forget political parties. If you were at a party. <laughs> 
and you looked around <laughs> and you saw James Woods, Ted Nugent, Kirk Cameron, Kid Rock, and Scott Bayo, you'd be like, this party sucks. I think we should get the fuck out of here before Scott Bayo tries to talk to us. <laughs> I'm really glad you guys like that one. I like that. That's, That's great. very funny. Okay, so then that part's good. I need to rework the... Can you, uh, can you bash the uh, uh, uneducated in that, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did in this draft. I did say, would you idiots just look around at yourselves for a second? <laughs> and I took it out because, because I heard Rob's note, and I, and I incorporated it. How aware of you. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? That's great. Um, yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got today. All right. Yeah. Any other thoughts about the uh, me calling Republicans dumb idiots? Dummy, dummy, dumb, dumb. Uh, I, I, like I think uh, double down on what does it look like to have no dorks around. I think that's a that's the funniest premise there. It's funny yeah. part of that. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You know what? I, it's it's also when you kind of equalize the problem too. Like maybe with the Democratic Party, part of the reason we don't <clears throat> we, we 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 get so fractured is because there's too many cooks. But then with the Republicans, no cooks. Too many dorks. Just <laughs> <laughs> Too many dorks. Yeah. There's no cooks. We're like, is there any too, cooks? Too many dorks in the kitchen. <laughs> too many dorks. <laughs> I don't know if cooks. That's a very funny idea. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a very fair criticism of the Republican Party, of the uh, Democratic Party. Yeah. They're like, well, string theory actually uh, discounts, you know, molecular <laughs> chemistry. So <laughs> you're racist. <laughs> <laughs> Too many dorks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of like, while the Democrats are arguing, the Republicans then did X, you know. They're just counting their money. Yeah. yeah. Mean, meanwhile, the Republicans drove a, drove a Hummer through our convention. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, like there may be something in the joke uh, for our favorite expression, uh, facts don't care, care about your feelings. Because... Mm -hmm. uh, if you're, How do you even know if you're uneducated? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it was a, it was a, uh, was it Giuliani that said, uh, "Truth is not truth." Uh, maybe, and I mean, Kellyanne Conway said, uh, "Alternative facts." You know. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was Giuliani. I forget, forget on what context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a regular theme in the Republican Party. I'm literally hearing crickets. <laughs> 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 hey! Mm -hmm. But do they have some good? Oh, you got some pet crickets there. <laughs> I did a uh, I did a show at Wiley's, and there was a cricket in like the rafters, and <laughs> nice. we would hear it every once in a while. And I was like, "Is that someone's phone? Is somebody trolling me? Like, I don't understand." <laughs> and then when we figured out it was an actual live critic, I was like, "This is." Every stand-up comedian's worst nightmare. There is a literal <laughs> cricket, cricket in here, accentuating every. Do, that's why he doesn't do outdoor shows, right, Brett? <laughs> One of the <laughs> hundreds of reasons I don't do outdoor shows. I had a woman in the last year. There was a woman who had the one of those apps, and I told a joke, and she was holding up her phone with the crickets, and wow. I fucking really? lost it on her. Oh yeah. I, that's infuri that sounds infuriating. Was I it an was, outdoor show also? No. no. Oh. <laughs> it, I, I was so angry. And, and for some reason, I couldn't really get the rest of the crowd to hate her the way that I did. So I <laughs> took it out on the whole crowd for like, I mean, this happened probably yeah, done that. 10 or 15 minutes into my set. I was so mad that uh, like a few people came up to me after and they were like, we thought you were funny until you made everybody feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> But I was so pissed because it was like this group, too, and I had to deal with them with their tickets. They had, like, the wrong tickets or whatever, and I was, like, emailing Ron. Oh, yeah, you told uh, me about this show. And, and then, like, like I could have just sent them away and been like, Rob, no, you know you're inside now. <laughs> <laughs> you were going through a hike for half of the episode. Now you're indoors. You put the sunglasses on. <laughs> All right. And he puts on some sunscreen so sorry, and a hat. <laughs> Okay, well, now now I'm the weird guy because <laughs> Anthony. Oh, my sunglasses are all the way over there. I can't yeah, contribute mine. to this bit. We all know how lazy you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have I brought that up on the show? <laughs> not, not today, but <laughs> today you brought up how you're a liberal. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Next I didn't say that I was a liberal. I said that I hated Republicans. You don't have to be <laughs> a liberal to hate Republicans. You just have to have an education. <laughs> I didn't learn a thing. <laughs> All right. I think that's our episode, right, guys? Yeah. I think so. Good app. Good app, indeed. And now we have an outro, so we don't even have to do one. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> this is a great outro. How's it going, everybody? Thank you so much for watching. We just want to remind you that we have a live Zoom show coming up on February 23rd at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can get tickets at NowhereTime.com. It's our second live show. Our first one was awesome. You definitely want to come check it out. We're pitching jokes live. You can laugh along with us. Uh, one member of our Patreon will get to pitch a joke as well. People contribute in the comments. It's super fun. So come check it out. February 23rd, 9 p.m. Eastern. These guys have helped zero <laughs> in this. Pitch. Oh, uh, was I supposed to do something? <laughs> no, we've been that's doing. Okay. No, we got it. You can't see us <laughs> doing our funny reactions to what you're saying. It's good enough.